when people get old, they can't even operate a Buick. They buy a 60-foot-long RV and take it to the highway. If somebody says you're one in a million, does that mean there's 1,300 people just like you in China? <laughs> in this really awful beaten path place, this little flea bitten motel uh, in, uh, in Kentucky, you know, like down two gravel roads, turn left. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I called the front desk, and I said, sir, I got a leak in my sink. He says, you paid for the room. Do whatever you want. I think business is both pretty simple. Really, business comes down to this. You've got a great product, you've got a great service, get out there and tell the world about it, and you will probably be a success. It's really pretty simple. I'm amazed always at the policies and the procedures that large organizations come up with that almost deter people from doing business with them. Life and business are really pretty simple, and both can be enjoyable. First thing you gotta do is think. You gotta think. A lot of people don't do that anymore in our society. In fact, I bought a wheelbarrow at my farm. You know that wheelbarrows have warning labels? 13-inch tire says, caution, not for highway use. <laughs> I'm convinced that warning label's there for a reason because somebody didn't know any better. Have you seen these books, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus? Has anybody seen these books? There's 24 installments. Has anybody read them? You guys don't get CNN or Reed or anything out there. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give you the book report. For those of you that have not read Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, men and women are different. That's pretty much it right there. <laughs> Lori's mother would send us all these little clippings and pictures, you know, about people and children. And she'd send pictures of the grandkids and pictures of my wife's sister and the kids and always put some little cute note in there, thinking of you, thinking of you. Every holiday we get some card with pictures of the kids and grandkids and nieces and nephews, thinking of you. Open up the newspaper one day and there's a big ad for a nursing home. <laughs> Cut it out, put a little note in there, Dixie, thinking of you. <laughs> Think about watching television news, ladies and gentlemen. In the old days, like in Walter Cronkite, which I'm just barely old enough to remember, there was one story at a time and there's a pretend wall. Do you remember that? If you watch cable news, they don't even have the wall anymore. There's people back there walking around like making copies and carrying file folders around. Down across the bottom of the screen, there's like information and there's numbers popping up that might be the temperature in Boise or the price of Intel shares. And a lot of people say, oh, that's great. That's, that's new fangled news coverage. You know what? That's great for you. But I suffer from attention deficit disorder. My wife's in the other room. What's going on in the news today? I said, I don't know. I was watching in the background make copies. <laughs> Are there brush fires in Argentina? I don't know, but she had a jam up on the Xerox lasted three commercial breaks. <laughs> I got so tired of hearing bad jokes, I wrote my own joke book. And so I want to put this together for you. You want to hear a joke? You a cowboy? You know the three biggest lies a cowboy tells, Neil? My truck's paid for, I'm going to quit drinking, and honestly, I was just helping that sheep over the fence. <laughs> what I do when I travel is I carry an old pair of used hearing aids. I recommend this to anybody that wants to preserve their sense of humor. You can get used hearing aids at estate sales for cheap. Uh, the truth is, I picked up mine for free off the nightstand at a nursing home. <laughs> there was a little thing that happened in 1998, some of you might remember, involved a, a president and a woman that was an intern. Her name was Monica. It was in the news for like a day. Did anybody catch it? We got a lot of interesting calls that year. We got a call from the people at Hustler Magazine. Wanted to do a nude pictorial, right? Dressed up like Bill Clinton and undressed. My agent called me on the road and he said, uh, this is what's going on. I said, good God, I cannot do a nude pictorial in Hustler Magazine. What would my mother think? Damien, I assumed that would be your response, but uh, just in case, I went ahead and quoted him 30 grand. <laughs> I said, well, Mom doesn't read Hustler. <laughs> I used to think that my sister was a manic depressant, but then I learned that manics have good days. <laughs> and the other thing I would tell you, and this is something we're going to kind of close out on, is, is you shouldn't take yourselves too seriously. I mean, I know that you have bad days and you have good days. Every business does. You say, oh, heck, look at you. You're just a comedian. What do you know? Well, I'll just tell you this. In 2001, something terrible happened on September 11th of 2001. My phone didn't ring for a year. 
Everything I had on the books canceled. All my investments got cut by about 60%. I was scrambling. Business got bad for me, just like business has ups and downs for everybody. By about 2003, I was kind of hoping for an identity theft because I was wanting to give my identity to somebody else. <laughs> By 2004, the bank called and said there was suspicious activity in my checking account. A deposit. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Have a good meeting. Thank you.